As the technology of man in space was developing, it became more and more apparent that our knowledge of the moon's surface as a possible landing site was not sufficient. To land man safely on the moon and get him safely off again, we had to know whether we could set up a precise enough trajectory to reach the moon. Could we design and build a spacecraft to land gently on the moon? Among all those lunar craters, could we find a place clear and level enough for a safe landing site? To make it possible for a man to land in the Apollo zone on the moon, better pictures were needed than those taken through Earth's best telescopes. In fact, better pictures might do more than find a landing site for Apollo. Scientists hoped they might resolve questions unanswered in the 300 years since Copernicus prompted Galileo to study the moon. What were the lunar craters Galileo observed? Pits dug by objects hurled from space, or the scars of old volcanoes? Telescopic photographs, far from answering these questions, scarcely reveal features on the moon as big as the meteor crater in Arizona, almost a mile across and several hundred feet deep. Ranger was designed simply to hit the moon. Before it crashed into its lunar impact point, it would send back to Earth close-up TV pictures of a portion of the moon's surface. The first successful ranger reached a small lunar sea, since renamed Mare Cognitum, the sea that has become known. Mark, it is one minute to impact. All cameras are functioning. As soon as the cameras were turned on, the pictures were transmitted to the tracking station at Goldstone, California. From here, they were retransmitted to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in nearby Pasadena. Here in the Space Flight Operations Facility, great excitement prevailed as Ranger neared the moon and its pictures came alive on the TV monitor. At last, scientists could turn to close-up pictures like these. 20 seconds to impact. All video good. Signal normal. Stand by for impact. Still good. Excellent signal strength. Three, two, one. Impact, impact has occurred. Prints of each picture were made for immediate study by scientists and engineers. On the theory that all lunar seas were flat and would offer the best landing sites, Ranger examined the surface of two such areas. The photographs at first showed little evidence of any volcanic activity on the moon. No boulders, no rubble, no crevasses, no dust. Pictures of craters covering craters suggested that the surface of the moon was long ago dug into and loosened by repeated impacts. In Ranger 8 photographs, the first signs of volcanic activity on the moon seemed to appear. The lunar landscape Ranger's TV cameras explored was bleak. A flat surface studded with craters some are miles across, others no bigger than a wash tub. All were probably formed billions of years ago. The last target area was the floor of the Alphonsus crater, chosen because it was not a lunar sea. There was a lot of interest in the dark, smaller craters within Alphonsus, which might explain more about the forming of the lunar surface. On the Alphonsus floor, New signs of variety on the moon's surface began to appear. Craters caused by volcanoes long since dead 